After being in gyms for over 20 years now, I'm pretty much at the point of supporting life imprisonment for people who do this. People who... What's up guys, Sean Alawani, realscienceathletics.com. In this video today, we're gonna be going over 20 things people commonly do in the gym, things that you yourself might be doing right now during your own workouts, but that are ultimately mistakes you should avoid. And this is gonna be a mixed bag that includes certain exercises that you'll most likely be best off to steer clear of, exercises that are effective, but that people very commonly do wrong. And I'm even gonna throw in a few gym etiquette mistakes here as well. So I've got 20 points to cover here, and let me know down below in the comments which ones you think are the very worst, or if there's anything else that you would add to this list. If you're new here, then make sure to hit that subscribe button below and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future videos, and let's jump into it. All right, mistake number one on the list, one that might ruffle some feathers right off the bat because it's a really popular exercise, and that is front raises. Now it's not that front raises are are gonna hurt you, but in the majority of cases, they're just unnecessary because most lifters already get more than enough front delt stimulation through all of their basic chest and shoulder pressing exercises, and their front delts are already overdeveloped in comparison to the side and rear heads, which are a lot more important for achieving that round, uh, sort of capped shoulder look. So if you insist on doing front raises, then that's ultimately up to you, but aside from a very small percentage of cases, you're probably just wasting your time and effort overall. Number two is a BOSU ball squat, or pretty much a BOSU ball anything, whether it's standing on a BOSU ball and doing curls or overhead presses or um, using it for chest presses or push-ups or whatever else. Okay, this doesn't improve the functionality of the exercise, it doesn't increase muscle stimulation or really do anything useful at all for that matter. All it really does is put you in a less stable position and reduces the amount of force that you can generate against the weight. So forget the BOSU ball, you don't need it. Just perform your exercises on a solid, steady surface. Number three is reverse grip triceps extensions. Using a reverse grip has no beneficial effect on the activation of your triceps. It doesn't hit the triceps any differently or in some special unique way, and there's really just no advantage to it. Uh, however, there is a disadvantage, which is that it puts your grip into a weaker position and makes the exercise more awkward to perform. If you wanna maximize the stress on your triceps, there's no reason to not use a standard neutral or pronated grip, and you can just use the grip that feels most comfortable for you. Number four is flaring your elbows out during chest pressing exercises. When you flare your elbows directly out to your sides at 90 degrees, or uh, even worse, you position your elbows behind your body, you're gonna be putting a lot of stress on your shoulder joints. That can definitely add up over time. So instead, make sure to tuck your elbows in slightly at roughly a 75 degree angle. Number five is using excessive spotter assistance during your sets. So I see this all the time in the gym where someone loads up way more weight that they can handle and then their spotter has their hands on the bar and is pretty much helping them out on every single rep of the exercise. Now this makes absolutely no sense at all to do. If your spotter has to assist you right from the get-go, then the weight is just too heavy and you need to lighten it up and use a weight that you can handle on your own through a full range of motion. Not only do you look like a complete goofball when you train this way, but it also increases your chances for injury and it prevents you from accurately tracking progressive overload because you can't specifically measure how much weight you're lifting versus how much the spotter is lifting. So aside from the odd time here and there where a spotter might assist you on the last rep of an exercise, you should be doing all of the reps on your own. Number six is the cable squat. So this is an exercise that women tend to gravitate towards um, and I pretty commonly see it being shown in a lot of these Instagram booty workouts and uh, YouTube glute building tutorials and I see it being done in the gym all the time as well. The problem with this exercise is that the line of resistance is pulling in the wrong direction and it's actually putting very minimal tension on your quads and glutes because it's basically just pulling your body forward towards the machine. If you actually wanna train your quads using a cable machine, then you'd need to be standing right up close to the machine so that the resistance is pulling in the right direction. But that said, cables are generally just not the best tool for quad training overall and there are just much better exercises to choose from. Number seven, a gym etiquette mistake, and that is lifting directly in front of the dumbbell rack. When you stand right in front of the dumbbells doing your curls or your shoulder raises or whatever else, you're blocking other people from getting in, and then they have to stand there waiting for you to finish before they can get to the dumbbells. So very simply, grab the dumbbells you need, take a couple steps back, and leave enough room for people to get in and out of the rack. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit that like button below to let me know. I really appreciate the support. And number eight is standing dumbbell external rotations. So a lot of people use this as a shoulder warm-up. I even see more experienced lifters doing this too, um, and personal trainers, you know, training their clients using this exercise. But this movement really makes no sense at all, because if you want to stimulate the rotator cuff, then the resistance needs to be pulling from the side, whereas with dumbbells, the gravity is pulling straight down 
down toward the floor. And so you're basically just isometrically contracting your biceps and your front delts. Now, external rotations are a great warm up movement, but to actually warm up your shoulders with this, you need to use a cable or a resistance band, or you can do it with dumbbells, but you need to be lying on your side. Number nine is the behind the neck pull down. So not only does this exercise put your shoulders into an awkward, excessively externally rotated position, but there's really no advantage to it either in comparison to a standard pull down to your upper chest. Now I'm not saying that you're guaranteed to get hurt doing this, but there's just no good reason to do lat pull downs this way in the first place. It's riskier, but with no real reward. Number 10 is plate exercises, which is another common trend that you'll find on Instagram these days, because hey, there's only so many barbell and dumbbell exercises that you can show to your audience, so might as well get creative purely for the sake of being creative, even if there's no inherent advantage to the exercise, which in this case, there isn't. Plates are just more awkward to grip. They make it harder to apply progressive overload. Uh, it's great for clicks and views from beginning lifters who don't know better because of the novelty factor, but ultimately there's really no point to this. All right, number 11 is performing leg presses with your hands on your knees. Uh, this is another bizarre lifting technique that I see in the gym all the time. If you have to press with your hands on your knees in order to lift the weight, then the weight is just too heavy in the first place. Or maybe the weight isn't too heavy and you're just making the exercise easier for yourself and reducing its effectiveness. Not to mention that for proper leg pressing form, you want to be holding onto the handles so that your lower back stays firmly planted in the seat. With your hands on your knees, your lower back is going to be a lot more likely to roll backward and that's going to increase your chances for injury. You know, you'd never do dumbbell curls and then use your opposite arm to help out on every single rep and so there's no reason to do leg presses that way either. Number 12 is combo exercises whether it's a squat into a lateral raise or a lunge into an overhead press or a row into a biceps curl. So these movements might look cool for Instagram and they might seem innovative and unique on the surface but there's really just no good reason to do your exercises in this way. And that's because your strength is gonna differ depending on the movement pattern that you're performing, and sometimes very significantly if you're combining compounds and isolations together. And so using the same weight for two different movements like this really makes no sense since one of those movements is gonna end up being undertrained relative to the other. So instead, just do one movement, use the appropriate resistance that you can handle for that specific movement, and then do the next movement separately and use the appropriate resistance that you can handle for that one. Alternating back and forth between different movement patterns in the same exercise, there's really no point to that. Okay, number 13, another gym etiquette mistake, and that is supersetting between multiple pieces of gym equipment at the same time. Now, if the gym is quiet and you know, you're using machines that don't get a lot of traffic, then it's probably not a big deal, but otherwise, don't be the guy who loads up the leg press, drapes his towel over the seat, and then walks to the other side of the gym to claim some other piece of equipment or even multiple pieces of equipment, and then supersets back and forth between all of them. There's no real advantage to supersets in the first place um, other than potentially as a time saver, and it's just really bad etiquette if you're forcing someone else to wait for you to complete your sequence of three sets of three different exercises before they can get to the equipment that you're using. Number 14 is excessively heavy lateral raises. So lateral raises are a great exercise to target the side delts, but they do put the shoulder into a more vulnerable position overall, and so you wanna stick with more moderate weight for slightly higher reps on these. Now you might be fine for the short term, but it will eventually catch up. Grabbing onto a pair of heavy dumbbells and heaving them around using a ton of momentum is a very bad idea. Okay, you don't need to be doing 50 pound lateral raises to effectively stimulate shoulder gains. So focus on technique and control with these. Um, I would never go less than about eight reps per set in perfect form and more like 10 to 12 reps per set and higher. That's probably gonna be ideal most of the time. Number 15 is dumbbell triceps kickbacks. Now, if you really like this exercise, I'm not saying you can't do it. Um, it does work your triceps to a certain extent, but I think there are just much better options overall. Dumbbell kickbacks have an awkward resistance curve where at the bottom they're really easy and there's almost no tension at all on the triceps. And then as you kick the weight back, it all of a sudden becomes a lot harder. So it's easiest in the position where your triceps are the strongest and then it's hardest in the position where your triceps are the weakest. If you're gonna do kickbacks, then I would suggest using cables because that's gonna allow for a much more natural resistance curve and you'll just find that it feels smoother and more natural overall. Number 16 is upright rows using an excessive range of motion. So pulling the weight all the way up to your neck with your elbows up toward your ears. So if you're gonna do upright rows at all, 
In most cases, the weight should ideally be pulled no higher than to the point where your elbows are in line with your shoulders, and you should be using moderate weight for slightly higher reps. Otherwise, you're really running the risk for injury since full range of motion upright rows, for most people, put their shoulders into an awkward, internally rotated position and using really heavy weights just adds to the stress. Now, some people out there can do full range of motion upright rows with no problem, but for the majority, it's probably something you're gonna be best off to avoid. Number 17 is the rolling dumbbell shrug. Now, this doesn't seem to be as common in gyms as it used to be, but it's where someone performs a shrug and then rolls their shoulders in a circular motion, either backward or forward. Now, ultimately, there's no point to this because the resistance is pulling down in a straight line, and so the only way to actually work your traps is by moving your shoulders straight up and down. Rolling your shoulders around just isn't adding anything to the exercise. All right, number 18, gym etiquette again, the one that drives me the most insane by far, and that's people who don't re-rack their weights. After being in gyms for over 20 years now, I'm pretty much at the point of supporting life imprisonment for people who do this. People who blatantly load up barbells or dumbbells or whatever else, perform their sets, and then just walk away, leaving the weights for somebody else to clean up. Now, I understand that the laws of physics are highly complex and not yet fully understood, but from a probability standpoint, weight plates generally don't spontaneously re-rack themselves without human intervention. So there is no excuse here. Don't be that guy. If you were capable of loading up the bar, then you're capable of unloading it as well. Re-racking your weights is basic common courtesy. Number 19 is the standing plate press. Now, this exercise might really feel like it's hitting your chest hard, but that's only because of the fact that you're forcefully squeezing your hands together. You can get the same effect by sitting there with no weight at all and doing the same thing. In reality, the standing plate press doesn't work your chest effectively because the resistance is pulling in the wrong direction. It needs to be pulling back toward your body, but instead it's pulling straight down toward the floor, meaning that it's basically just an isometric contraction for the front delts. If you really want to do plate presses, then they need to be done lying down, but standard free weight presses are definitely going to be superior either way. And finally, number 20 is side bends using a weight in both hands. Now, I'm not really a fan of side bends in the first place because I think there are just much better exercises to train your obliques if that's an area that you want to train in the first place. Uh, for example, cable wood choppers or uh, twisting rope crunches, those are going to be much better exercises in my view. But side bends are especially bad if you're holding a weight in both hands because the weight on one side acts as a counterbalance to the other. And so you're not really getting much of a training effect at all. You're basically just aimlessly moving your body from side to side and more or less completely wasting your time. So those are the 20 mistakes I've got for you today. Um, I could easily list off 100 more of these if I really sat down and took the time. There's just so much misleading information out there when it comes to effective muscle building training. And if you want to make sure that you're on the right path toward your goal physique using legit evidence-based principles that truly work without all the gimmicky nonsense, then head over to seannell.com custom, fill out the short form there, and I'll send you back a solid structured plan that you can follow 100% free based on your current condition, your goals, and your experience level. And this includes uh, not just a training plan, but a nutrition plan as well. You can click up here for that or use the link in the description box below. When it comes to effective supplementation, you can also visit realscienceathletics.com to check out our evidence-based formulas that are all 100% research-backed, fully dosed and transparently labeled to optimize your body composition, training performance, and overall health. The link is also up here and in the description box below, and you can use discount code YouTube15, which will take 15% off your first order. Here's two more videos that I'd recommend watching now. Hit that subscribe button button and the notification bell to stay in the loop on future videos. You can follow me over on Instagram for more daily tips and updates, and I will see you in the next one.